it's been a while since I've done one of these, but I'm back with another curriculum spotlight. As we move into the spring and people start curriculum shopping more, I have several of these that I'm going to do. If you have a curriculum that you are interested in learning more about, leave me a comment below. If I've used it, I will do one on it, but I'm only, I only do these on ones that I've actually used so that I can give you my honest thoughts on it. If you've never watched one of my curriculum spotlights, it came about because when I am interested in new curriculum, I like to sit down with someone who's used it, look at the material, and find out, you know, have a conversation with them about it, what they liked, how they used it, what they don't like, that sort of thing. And I want to be able to hold it in my hands and look at it in a way that I can't really get when I do it when I'm looking online. Obviously, I can't sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, but this is my attempt to do so. First, I'm going to talk about the curriculum and exactly that, how I use it, what I like about it, what I don't, that sort of thing. And then I'll turn the camera down and I will kind of walk you through it. I didn't even tell you what I'm doing today. Maybe you caught on by the title. I am talking about writing and rhetoric, which is from Classical Academic Press. So let's get started. I have been using this now for two years. We started in January of 2015 with my daughter. We had used Wordsmith Apprentice in the fall and Writing Strands. And Writing Strands was good, but Wordsmith Apprentice was kind of a bust, which surprised me. I came across this one after my sister recommended it, and it has been a great hit. It starts with grades three or four is the book is book one my i am using it both with my fourth grader and my eighth grader ben is doing it this is his first year so it has been a good fit for him now third grade would not i don't think would have been and then it goes through high school the books run about twenty dollars depending on where you buy it amazon's prices are like 19.95 depending on the level. We spend about 20 minutes a day on it and we do it every day of the week. One of the things that I really like about this curriculum is that it gives your student good writing and helps them learn to improve upon it. Rather than your child just creating their own work from scratch and maybe it's good or maybe it's not so good. This one I really like the give you work and show you say this is what's good now let's change it up let's make it better that's sort one of thing i think it's a really nice approach especially for children who are not natural writers because it gives them a starting point they already have something that they can work from something else i really love about it is the variety of activities in each one i didn't say a week a, a week one lesson is supposed to take you about a week. So within a week, starts off with the reading um, that the whole lesson will be based around. And then there's narration, there's talking about it, there's analysis, depending on the level, there's dictation, there's copy work, there is summary, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of different activities within each one. And it's all based on the initial story. So children really get to have a lot of experience working with that one story, which is not only do I like that part, but it also makes it easier that each day they're just building on that. So they're not having to learn a new story to go with each day's lesson. And something else I really love about it is that the readings are really interesting. They're good. There are a variety of them. Book one, I'm looking here, was fables. So they were obviously, they were all fables. Book two is narratives. Um, so they're just little, um, I think it's all on using myths. Elizabeth's book five that she is almost finished with has a lot of, um, like some tall tales and just American 
folk tales with it. So each book has different reading material that they have with it, within it, and it's all really good. And it's a nice exposure to stories that your children may just not come across otherwise. Cons. There's a lot of reading in it. Now, obviously for a writing curriculum, that's not a bad thing. I mean, obviously you want that. But if you have a child who, for whom a lot of reading is tougher, then it's going, it may be, may be a problem. My daughter, for her, with her learning challenges, it is. The way we combat that with is with the audio files that you can purchase of the story, the initial, the lesson reading at the beginning, and then sometimes, depending on the week and the day, I will do some of the reading with her, whether it's through the story or just the different parts. Um, and it really just depends on the week for her. But that's something to be aware of, that it is a lot of reading. I, don't, I guess I shouldn't call that a con, but something to be aware of. And the other thing is that you really need to commit to the, the method and the books. One level is not really a complete level in that you don't get paragraph writing and outlining and uh, synonyms and antonyms and all of that within each book doesn't do all of that. Whereas a lot of traditional writing programs like write, Winning with Writing, for example, will, like you could, that whole book will give a child an exposure to all of those things. This does not. But as you put it all together, they will get everything that they need. So, you just need to be aware of that because I know a lot of people do not like that part of this program. Now, what kind of a student is it good for? Honestly, I think it's good for a lot of different types. My two children who are using it are very different. Ben loves reading. He loves writing. He's been writing these complex stories since he was little. So that, this felt like a natural fit for him. Elizabeth, Elizabeth is not any of those things. <laughs> so, and like I said, with her learning challenges, language is where it shows up. So for her to have a, for her to have a program that she likes and been to like the same one, uh, blew me away. I really, I'm, I'm really surprised by that <laughs> because they shouldn't have. I mean, there's very few things that in general that they both like. Um, other than like story of the world, I honestly am not sure I can name another curriculum that they both enjoyed. <laughs> so this is easy to implement, open and go. I do no prep other than some weeks, depending on the week, I will look through and just kind of see what stories they're going to be doing, but there's nothing that I need to prep. So if you're looking for a low prep writing program, this may be the one for you. And do I use it now? Yes. So like I said, I am using it with both kids. Elizabeth started two years ago and Ben is just started his second book. Other things to know, there are audio files like I mentioned. It will read the first story to you. It also gives a little bit of background information before the reading. I thought they would be really great for Elizabeth. Um, some days she, some weeks she likes it and other weeks she does not. She's finishing up book five. I'm not sure if we will buy them for book six or not yet. I'm gonna leave that up to her. The teacher's guide. I have not found a benefit to having it, honestly. I did purchase one. I found one used, so I grabbed it. But there really wasn't anything in here that was really all that beneficial to me. It may be different for you, and if you are grading it, then I think this has this may have some more information in it that would more guidance that you may want. I don't grade this right now. I will next year, so but I don't think it's been a bad purchase either. If I could find more used copies of them, I would definitely grab them. And 
Oh, the only other thing is that I do occasionally supplement with writing strands for Elizabeth. If you're interested in writing strands, I do have a spotlight on it. I'll pop it up there. Only because she liked writing strands pretty well and it's kind of nice sometimes to just take a break from this and do something else. We will, you know, every six to eight weeks, I will take a week off of writing and rhetoric. We'll do something else and then we'll come back to it. Each book is supposed to be a one semester book. I don't think I mentioned that. So that's that. I will turn the camera down and look inside it. If you have any questions about it, be sure to leave me a comment below. I'd be happy to try to answer whatever I can about it. So let's turn down the camera. I'm going to give you a look inside the book, the student edition, and then show you a little bit of the teacher's edition. So obviously we'll start out with your table of contents. It gives you a typical week of teaching. So kind of they give a three or four day schedule and then how you might want to use it. And then just some information about the program. And specific, that one was about the program itself. This one was specifically about this book. Okay, and then lesson one. Since this is, you know, the third, fourth grade book, the, the reading is pretty short. And then it goes into the assignment. So here they want you to talk about the definitions and then the different types. Then with the definitions that they just learned, they have to read and figure out what type it is. Like I said, these the activities are similar each week, but vary a little bit. So lesson two, the reading is a little longer this time, but again, it starts with narration, have some talk about it, and the talk about it is supposed to be done with someone. I usually save till the end of the lesson and then do anything that requires me to talk with him. We'll do it. We'll save it then, but I do have him go ahead and read it and kind of prepare in his mind. Then go deeper section. Just some analysis type work of the story. Some copy work, dictation. We usually skip the dictation for him. Then the sentence play. They give the sentence and then they have student do some changes and kind of gives them some guidance, but then lets them change it up. how each lesson goes. And then this is the teacher's edition for book five. I don't think I mentioned that's book two. So again, table of contents, a typical teaching week, and then an overview of the program, why it does it the way it does it, the objectives, and then an overview of what is take is what of what is covered in each book. There's information about teaching the book. and then a key of what you might see. And then the teacher's edition looks almost identical to the student edition. It has a little bit of information about the lesson, and then it has the same reading. Like I said, this is book five, so you can see it has more reading. And then 
what's different is here where they put in your sample answers. There are occasional teacher notes as well. You can see there's you know, similar things like there's symptoms play, more copiousness, amplification. So this oh the part sec the parts of each lesson are similar throughout the series. It just the details. What happens inside of it varies. For the speak it section, I will often have Elizabeth a little microphone there. I will often have her just use um, the iPad or phone and do the speak it on here and then I can listen to it later. Book five brings in revision. I really love that before book five there's not an emphasis on revision. It allows a child for those who are resistant <laughs> to revising gives them a chance to gain confidence writing before they enter into that. So that's what the teacher's edition is like. I do think it's nice that they have a notes page here so you can make any notes you want as you're preparing for the lesson. Or you know, if you have more than one student that you're going to use this with, you can jot down anything to remember for the next time. So the teacher answers are well identified. So that's nice. And that is that. If you have any questions, like I said, be sure to leave them below. And thanks for watching.